from 1, 1 to 2, comma, 2 root 2. You ready for this one? I hope so. Well, I want you to help me. I want you to tell me what I should do first. If I'm trying to find the length, what should I do first? Take the derivative. Very good. Take the derivative. Am I worried about changing this into certain terms? Like, do I want to change it into terms of y or x depending on length? The length seems to be the same no matter whether you have this in terms of x or in terms of y, so it really doesn't matter. I'm going to show you in a little bit that it's going to come up with the exact same measurement, exact same measurement, either way that you do this. Okay? So whatever it is, it is. It's fine. Just make sure that you have it in some terms. So y equals, this happens to be in terms of x. Well, maybe we write a y if you want. y equals x to the 3 halves. So that's in terms of x. Lead in terms of x. It's okay. Taking a derivative, great. First derivative, everybody, what's the first derivative of that thing, please? Three halves. Don't forget the three halves. That would blow your problem up. Three halves, x to the what? One half. Very good. So our length is an integral from... Now, this is the only place where you've got to be a little careful. What is your function in terms of? Is it in terms of y or in terms of x? In terms of x. Very good. It's in terms of x. So what are our bounds going to be? x's or y's? What's your function in terms of? Are you going to plug y's into x's? No. I hope not. So what are your bounds going to be in terms of? X's. You have in terms of x, right? This has an x in it. So am I going to go from 1 to 2 or 1 to 2 root 2? 1 to 2. 1 to 2, because those are my x's. Wouldn't matter here, right? X and y is the same there. But here, it definitely would make a difference. So because I'm in terms of x right now, I'm going to go from 1 to 2, square root, 1 plus, I've already taken the first derivative, we've got 3 halves, x to the 1 half, don't forget to square it, dx. Are you okay on the setup, ladies and gentlemen? Honestly, are you okay with it? Okay. That's the calculus. We're going to have a whole bunch of algebra and then a little bit more calculus. Let's see if we can work through this thing. What's the first thing we're going to do? Help me out. Come on. Square root right of x. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure that's going to be what? 9 fourths x. I like it. What now? What now? Think back to the previous problem. Think back to the previous problem. Find a common See what? Find a common denominator. Find a common denominator. Do we have a denominator right now? Actually, you know what? Can we make this a little easier? Instead of doing all that, can we make it a little easier? Would you mind if I made it a little easier? Because we can do all that, and you're still going to have the same problem. However, I want you to think about think about this for a second. Would a substitution work? Yeah. Tell me something. What's the derivative of this whole thing right here? Nine fourths. Do we care about constants when we're doing substitution? So would a substitution work? So don't forget about substitutions, that's going to work. If you found the common denominator would work out, the common denominator is 4, what you're going to get is 4 plus 9x over 4, that would be the square root of 2, but you're left with 4 plus 9x. You're still going to have, think about that for a second, please just think through this <coughs> in your head. If you find a common denominator, you have 4 over 4, write it if you want, you have 4 over 4 plus 9 fourths, right? You have that. When you do this, when you do this, you're going to have 4 plus 9x over 4. You're going to be pulling out a 2 right there. You clear on that one? You're still going to have the 4 plus 9x in there. You're still going to need a substitution where you have to have a constant of 9. The 9 is going to be somewhere in this problem as well. So we can do a substitution now. It's going to work out exactly the same. Exactly the same. 
you want to see the substitution or you want to do it the other way? You're going to have a substitution either way. Do you see why you're going to have a substitution either way? Yeah. I think so. Well, explain to me why that's not the case. Someone else explain why I have a 2 and not a 2 root 2. Because the 2 is the x and it's in terms of x. Very good. Did that make sense? If we have du equals 9 fourths dx, if we reciprocate it, we get 4 ninths du equals dx. Well, let's keep going with that. That's great. We got 0, or we got 1 to 2. We've got, what was our, our u? Use the whole thing. So what's our integral become if I take u to be 1 plus 9 fourths x? Say what? Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it the square root of u for right now. But we have the square root, just so you see where it's coming from, the square root of u, that's our entire u from right here. Also we have, instead of dx, what are we going to put? Four Don't forget the 4 ninths, du. Tell me one more thing I could do right now if I wanted to. Oh, Say what? Oh, yes, I could pull the 4 ninths out. What else? I could change the bounds. Remember that with substitution, you can change the bounds. Do you want to do that now or do you want to do it later? If I don't change the bounds now, if I leave it 1, 2, notice I will have to plug this back into u before I evaluate. Do you remember doing that? So it's one or the other. You either leave it like it is, which is kind of not correct because you're, you're saying x's and u's, then do the whole integral and then plug this back in. That's OK. Or you can change bounds now, and we're going to change 2 and 1 to something else. Let's try that. So changing bounds. So I'm going to erase this real quick. When x is 2, how much do we get for u? 11 over 2? Okay. Let me get a double check on that as well. 11 over 2. Yeah. How about when you when x is 1, how much do we get? 13. Perfect. Make sure these go in the right spot. So for the 2, instead of 2, we've just changed our bounds. Basically what you do is you take your 2, you plug it in for your x, it's going to give you out a u. So our 2 became 11 over 2. Same thing here. We plug in our 1, gives you out a u. Our 1 became 13 over 4. Now I'm going to do what Sarah said. She said, let's pull the 4 ninths out. I like that. So we're going to have 4 ninths integral from 13 over 4 to 11 over 2. And I'm going to do what Joe said, which said, change the square root of u to u to the 1 half, the u. Hey, hard integral, easy integral, what do you think? Pretty easy. Pretty easy, yeah. So we'll have the 4 ninths, but don't lose that 4 ninths. We have u to the 3 halves over 3 halves. I'll evaluate in just a minute. Notice that we add 1 to the 1 half, you get 3 halves over 3 halves. Be careful on making this a little bit prettier. You'll have 4 ninths times 2u to the 3 halves over 3. Still okay getting that far? Now, we're going to have 8 over 27. u to 3 halves. Do I need to put this back in to this? No, because I changed the balance. It's great. All I want to do is evaluate from some really nasty numbers, actually. Really nasty numbers. You got 11 over 2. You got 13 <coughs> over 4.
Well, let's see what that thing works out at. So, 8 over 27. What do you say we leave that up front and, and don't deal with it for right now? Let's just plug in uh, 11 over 2. To 3 halves. And 13 over 4. Two to three halves. Still okay with it? Mm -hmm. I'm not. It's horrible. It looks ridiculous. Oh man. Um, well, now we get to do 11 to three halves over two to three halves. We get to do 13 to three halves over four to three halves. Give me 11 to the third power, please, because I can't do that in my head. 13, 31. You know what? Maybe I'll write it like this to keep it a little bit easier. Is it okay if I write it 11 squared times 11 for you? That's still true, isn't it? Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing here. 2 squared times 2 minus, I'm going to do 13 squared times 13. And this is just going to be 8. <laughs> it's like you pulled Which way does it go on? <laughs> <laughs> you can do that if you really want. Uh, but it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be the same <laughs> thing. Put, <laughs> it's every, it probably just took a turn for the worse. Isn't that the same thing? 4 to the 3 halves power, square root of 4 is 2, 2 to the 3rd power is 8, so you get denominator of 8 right there. You still okay so far? Super yeah. duper. Super fun. Okay, let's see here. So we have 8 over 27. We've got 11 root 11 over 2 root 2. We have 13 root 13 over 8. Awesome, awesome. So very cool. How do you get those together? You do. Probably the first thing I would do is just deal with this root 2. Rationalize that. If I rationalize, I'll multiply by the root 2 over the root 2 and also 4 over 4 to get a common denominator of 8. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Fancy math, I suppose, but still basic algebra. Four root 2. Four root 2. Five four. I think that will. Hang on. No. Two root two. Yeah. Don't you always use the same one for your problem? You don't, for rationalizing, you don't need to worry about that two. It's just the root two. So rationalizing, it's just the root two. I'm also trying to get a common denominator of eight, though. So I'm going to have two times two, which gives me four.